what is up everybody it's your boy back at it again with another big body banger and today we're going to be checking out a brief history of austria um with some strong language it's uh by uh guy bloke i'm pretty sure it's the guy's name let me go ahead and make sure i get the name right so we don't throw some disrespect on him yeah guy bloke is his name have never checked this channel out before but this did come up in my recommended so obviously we got to check this out as always austria i haven't really dived into you that much i mean i have done a few videos and stuff where i've done some reactions and we've done some discussions and whatnot but there's a whole world out there and uh, you guys are definitely a part of it so we're gonna go ahead and uh, check this out for all my fellow austrians if you guys are here go ahead and make a presence in the comments down below all my germans uh you know you guys always show up and show out you guys already know what it is and everybody else do the same in the comments down below so let's go ahead and check this thing out um and kind of learn some new shiz in it because i don't know a whole lot about austria i know a decent amount because obviously austria has a very interesting connection with germany and a lot of europe in general so i kind of want to see what this guy um puts in this video um, that is information that I pretty much don't already know, which is a lot, trust me. <laughs> let's not waste any time, let's dive nose deep and see exactly what we're working with. Los Gates! Mm -mm -mm -mm. Here we are. This is the video, and uh, as you can see, the reaction format's a bit different. Um, this is the same reaction format we have on twitch.tv slash James Bray Gang. So if you guys want to go and follow me over there and catch my streams live, we're streaming pretty much every day. And um, I, I like what we do over there. But let's go. Check this out. Class, it would appear that your school is running low on budget, so they picked up some random guy in the wayside to teach you history. God. Ugh. Well, they locked the door. So I guess while I'm stuck here with you little shits, we might as well get something done, right? <laughs> My name is Schrotinger, which is German, I don't expect you to know jack shit about history, so I'll try and make this as short and as easy as possible for Schrotinger. you. Schrotinger. Now, do you know where you left off last time? I think we were, uh... Never mind. Let's start with Austria. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you asked. Austria is that little shit that always starts to cackle whenever someone blames Germany for Hitler. Or World War One. Yo, I'd be saying the same shit, bro. Austria in the cut with it, bro. Like Germany gets dunked on all the time for World War Two, and Austria's like, <laughs> I'm like, bro, no one looks at Austria at all, man. Like, and they're the prime. They're like public enemy number one, but low key, like they just be chilling, bro. Like, ugh. like you know, historically wise, right? It's like, damn, it's like they poked the bear and then jumped out of the, they poked the bear, jumped into the bushes, and then Germany just happened to be chilling there. And they're like, yo, I mean, I know we're looking for bears and shit, but where Austria go low key? And then Germany gets the flack, you know, it's crazy. That little guy was no way so small and insignificant though. In fact, it was once one of the greatest empires of Europe, but I guess you win some, you lose some. Ain't that right, Great Britain? Oh anyway, my God. <laughs> I love right? this guy's humor. First off, we're not getting anywhere if you keep interrupting your teacher. Oh shit, my bad. Ah, oh, shut the fuck up, Dan. Secondly, the centuries before that were pretty much just the Romans noticing. Dude, there's people in the hills. Then conquering the shit out of that land just to get run over by barbarians. Who oh, oh, true. Then got run over by other barbarians pretending to be Romans. No, Austria <laughs> first appears as a cute little duchy in the Holy Roman Empire in 11. <laughs> really blobbing out of its neighboring duchies until eventually having enough influence to become emperor themselves. Oh. A title to which they will hold on to until the end Come of the HRE in the early 19th century. That's a long ass time. Damn True. right that is. It is. They managed to do that using something that I like to call the we can't war everyone, so we are just going to marry everyone of importance policy. Ah, in that's a very, very effective strategy, man. You can't win in the streets, you can win in the cheeks. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. <laughs> the bloodline of the Habsburgers, the great royal family of Austria, being all over the goddamn place. Hmm. There were Spanish Habsburgers, Burgundian Habsburgers, Whoa. Habsburgers from the Netherlands, Good Hungary, Lord. Italy. Good lord. They get around. This is how incest happens. Whoa. You have so many bloody relatives that you can't even say which one's which and just roll with it. <laughs> anyway, through oh my god. Place, Austria <laughs> was pretty damn close to forming some kind of universal monarchy, which would have secured their power over the HRE. And Already. The, this guy's approach to dis, to describing um, the, the brief history of Austria and stuff the, with the events leading up to now is just so captivating, bro. Like this guy, 
Absolutely lit, bro. Legendary, man. I, I, I like his style, man. Europe once and for all, and it would have worked if it wasn't for the Ottomans banging at Vienna Spector in oh, 1529. Bro. And while that little bro. negative speed between the two... Literally, like, I, I learned about the Ottoman Empire from my Serbian subscribers, bro. And dang, like, I did not know how bad they were until... Dog, like, yo. <laughs> hey, they, they were they was definitely on some demon time. Not gonna lie. Definitely on some demon time. Because they conquered a lot, bro. Ottoman Empire went brazy back in the day, dude. That's crazy. Two most powerful nations in Europe at the time raged on for roughly 200 years. Other Whoa. nations had the possibility of reforming themselves so that they could stand on their own against Austria, which was still busy defending the empire. Jesus. One particular contestant became the newly found Prussia, which eventually became the great counterpart in the HRE. So after defeating Prussia, man, Prussia even had its own flag and stuff. And now look at Prussia. I mean, Prussia doesn't exist anymore, but dang, bro, it's crazy, man. It's kind of, it's crazy to me that Prussia doesn't exist. Like, what the heck? The Ottomans, the king of Austria, victoriously turned around at some point in the early 18th century and said, Oh, balls, what happened to my empire? Oh, Fuck, shit. <laughs> Brandenburg got huge. And then what happened to Bohemia? Oh, we ate it. Oh, oh my God. slightly angrier than usual. What the fuck? Spanish Habsburgers are gone too? What happened to our bloodline? Oh. Nearly went extinct. How the hell did that happen? Now what do you mean we still have no legal heir? Well, you know what? Fuck it. Women can become ruler now. Sir, you don't even have a daughter. Shut up, you'll see! <laughs> Maria Theresia claimed the Austrian throne in 1714. So you're just gonna throw names at us and expect us to remember them? Of course. Uh, I can't remember everybody's name, but this does make a lot of sense. This is a very well put together video. What the heck? Look, I'm trying to make this easier for you lot, but I can't talk my way around the more important people in history, <laughs> not without losing consistency anyway. It wasn't surprising that the other rulers of the HRE weren't too happy with the fact that the woman was now head of the empire. Oh, Listen. shit. This guy. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa, bro! <laughs> Is that what I think that... Oh, those are hands, bro. I thought that was something else, dog. Importantly, Friedrich II of Prussia decided that he is having none of that and declared war over the succession on the throne. Well, admittedly, all he wanted was Silesia, but the first reason was more something the other monarchs could get behind. Soon this war stretched over all of Europe and after eight years it pretty much ended on a draw and Maria kept the emperor title. Hmm. Well, technically her husband became emperor, but you know how it is. Dang. Well, that was pointless. Not so much for Prussia, though. They got to keep Silesia and thus were now officially one of the big guys in Europe. Oh, see? Prussia was interesting, man. Prussia high key had a big ass come up. And then I just, I keep... I don't know. I want to know specifically what made Prussia cra uh, crumble. Like, what specifically ruined Prussia? Like, I'm very, very confused because I reacted to a bunch of videos where they talked about the history of Prussia and stuff like that and kind of glazed over how it completely crumbled, right? Or maybe it was just very, like, I don't know. Maybe the way it was explained was in such a way where I didn't retain the information at the time. I was like, oh, but Prussia, bruh, if, some, if someone can sum it up in like a sentence on how, how Prussia became extinct, like in the comments down below, that would be huge because I'm very curious about that. Like what the freak happened to Prussia? Jesus Christ. The following years, Prussia and Austria repeatedly smashed their heads into each other without getting really anywhere. Enlightened absolutism was doing its thing in Europe, so at least socially things began to move. Oh my Poland God. got split between Prussia and Russia. Twice. That Yo, literally. <laughs> so Poland got split between Prussia and Russia and whoever this guy is. Catherine the Great of Russia. Oh, shit. Happens. Maria thought she might as well join the fun and get some land as well. It wasn't much else to do anyway. Mm. Skip to the French Revolution. Austria was pretty much the only nation who wanted to see this revolution to stop immediately, okay. given the fact that the French Queen was part of the Austrian family. Jesus. That was reasonable, I guess. Yeah. Austria failed spectacularly, though. And oh Napoleon my God! <laughs> France said, "Y'all can fuck off." <laughs> like, yo, <laughs> France wasn't playing no games, dude. Oh my God! And proceeded to kick both Austria and Prussia so hard they had to readjust their teeth, i.e., reform everything there was to be reformed, including military, economy, and damn, the gave them the beats, like man. France the second crowned himself Emperor of Austria to be of equal height to Emperor Napoleon, which honestly shouldn't have been much of an issue. Mm. In return, however, France was forced to put down the crown of the HRE, which from that point on ceased to exist. Damn. As Napoleon was gone for good, the great powers of Europe built up some kind of loose alliance against anything revolutionary, which also 
meant that pretty much anything they built up during the Napoleonic Wars had become something restricted in the sense of okay guys you'll get to keep your universities but we are going to dictate what you are going to learn there which is fuck all what did you say democracy never heard of it now would you be so kind uh, and that's that exactly that you you how you much. control a nation of people bro or society in general um you can you start at the base level which is like what people are learning in school what people learn in school it's pretty uh pretty important because that kind of like it sets itself as the foundation of knowledge for everybody and if you control what people are learning then it makes it easier for you to make whatever agenda you have um you know a reality you know honestly it's no longer a dream no longer a speculation it can become a, a reality based on what you choose to teach for instance ways of life are different forms of government right if you only teach uh you know uh, like dictatorship vibes and practices and stuff in school and teach that as it being the only form of government then people are just like oh cool i guess that that's it it is what it is you know it, as long as the information isn't able to be discovered anywhere else that's exactly how people get warped into like a brainwashed mindset it's so crazy dude so crazy censorship especially in the german federation the new hre substitute the damage was already done Dang. the year is 1848 this time the German Federation is close to become one. I'm cutting this short. Oh, I would love to just ramble on about that time period. <laughs> Sorry. One democratic nation. Anyway, the people couldn't quite agree on whether it was going to be a unified Reich with or without Austria, which over the years has grown out of Germany, as the historians would put it. Like, uh, is Austria in this thing or not? Nah? And Austria just be like, what y'all think? Austria back in 1848 did not only include German lands but also Hungary, most of the Balkans and some of Italy so that at last they decided Austria would not become part of Germany. Dang. So literally it wasn't even a small decision that got them there but still it, a, a few events could have changed and Austria would have been a part of Germany and Germany would have been fucking massive dude. Like at least way bigger than what it is now. I heard that Germany was pretty massive at some point and then of course a lot of land was lost a lot of wars were had, and Germany is what it is today, but dang. Which didn't matter after all, because both the Prussian king and the Austrian emperor went back after blacking out for a while and managed to put down the revolts. Dang. So that was all pointless. Aha! So you would think, but it left some important marks. First of all, it became clear that the German nation is only going to happen if someone higher up forms it by force, which is what happens not even 25 years after. Oh my that. god. And there's the fact that Austria, as it was, would never be part of said German state. <laughs> also, the Hungarians became a bit <laughs> Austria literally got ostracized. <laughs> no pun intended. And were only to hold in the empire when they were treated as equals. Hmm. Thus, Austro-Hungary was born, a state with two emperors. One Hungarian emperor and one more emperorable emperor of Austria. Honestly, how that abomination made What the fuck? It was the, was that their actual flag too? Like was that seems like a very confused looking flag like what the freak to survive the next 70 years is beyond me and then prussia slash bismarck formed germany in 1871 on the tears of the austrians not hmm. because they at last got kicked out of germany but more because they landed face forward in the balkans and realized that this is a mess that they are not going to be able to bro fix why they ever. do serbia like that though they gave serbia a pirate patch for the summer oh, oh my god <laughs> damn and even though Germany and Austria-Hungary became some kind of best buddies after that, the Balkans... Austria-Hungary. Germany, Austria-Hungary. That's crazy. Yeah, that's old Germany right there, man. That's crazy. ...will prove to be a burning bag of shit that even combined efforts will not be able to put out. And what happens after that should be known. Both Russia and Germany get some complete idiots as monarchs. Bismarck gets fired and then kicks the bucket. Suddenly everyone hates Germany except of Austria who got some kind of do whatever the fuck you want I'm in bro oath from Germany. Some Serbians or Bosnians or whatever I should classify them as shoot the Austrian prince and suddenly all of Europe is on fire. Dang. Austria, I heard there was some deeper stuff behind that though. So there's a reason why I think uh, the Serbian... Uh, initiated an assassination on an austrian prince i don't remember why but there was a reason there was a reason it wasn't random it was not random at all there was some other shit going on that they haven't really talked about so um i'll have to find a video that gets into detail with that so we can kind of cover that together guys but that was pretty insane there's there's so many sides to these stories man it's crazy but, but you you hear them all and you're able to kind of formulate a very dope opinion 
of uh, what actually happened and stuff, and and and, and, and uh, you know how the, the the severity of a lot of these events, because it's 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 absolutely mind blowing. He lost the war. Austria was reduced to what land it's got left today. Also, both weren't allowed to unify. Now listen, boys yeah. and girls, here's where the fun starts. Here we because go. Because what happened after that is one of these insane stories that make history nerds like me bust a nut. I'll try to boil oh it down God. for you. So Austria, much like Germany, was forced to become a republic, which was neat and all, but such a huge change doesn't really lead anywhere when no one has a fucking clue about how democracy works. True the Allies didn't give any help. They only said, just do it for fuck's sake. Germany had it a bit easier in that respect, as Prussia had some kind of, let's call it, pseudo-parliament already established under Bismarck, even though it didn't have any influence whatsoever. But hmm. that also meant that the Weimar Republic had some people like Ebert Ostresemann, which were actually capable Ebert of the the guy who's who's making this video, he's gotta be either Austrian or German. Like his accent on point or he's really good at you know speaking uh, pronun uh, uh, his pronunciation, but I'm, I'm willing to bet dude's German or something. While the Austrians had no one, now Austro-Hungary actually had a similar pseudo-parliament already established even earlier, but due to cultural differences they were even more useless, and of course a lot of capable politicians left after the end of World War One to form their own national parliaments, like mm. in Czechoslovakia for example. That and the economic situation during the 20s led to the politicians being more than just busy trying to fix the shambles the Habsburg burgers have left behind. The police was absolutely overstrained as well, as radical communists and the NSDAP started protesting and rioting Holy on a shit, larger dude. scale. At some point, people actually didn't want to leave their houses, not just because of the fascists, but rather because there might have been a chance to get caught up in a demonstration and then shot at by stressed out policemen. What the fuck? That's a lot of shit, bro. The good government shoot all things communists bang bang fascist bang bang bro they're like they're like on edge dude they're like on edge bro what the freak that's crazy what the heck that happened apparently the government gave the order to that in a sudden rush of shit to the brain hundreds died but wait there's more while germany voted itself out of democracy engelbert dolfus a conservative democrat and at the time chancellor kind of slipped and accidentally dissolved the parliament Whoa. well he'll go on and say the parliament had dissolved itself that cheeky bastard the wow. point is it made him alone the leader of austria screams by the people to restore the parliament were just struck off by president miklos basically saying the hell do i know and after a short civil war Dolfus, now officially dictator, began to restructure the country in a kind of fascist... But not so Dolfus was like the first pr primary, like, massive dictator in Austria, basically. And then I wonder if this inspired the the the, the mustache man way and hope it would stay independent from germany well we'll never know his two motives because he himself would eventually be murdered during a failed nazi coup d'etat in 1934 Ooh. austria finding itself under more and more pressure by hitler got anschlussed four years later is that a d oh my world god who happened yeah still with me after the war, Austria was split between the Allies, much like Germany. They managed to reinstall the country in 1954, once hmm. again as Republic, once again not allowed to join together with Germany as one country. Dang. Not that we would want to, I guess both the Germans and the Austrians are pretty much fed up with that idea. <laughs> the Soviets agreed to hand over their control zone, unlike in Germany, most likely because they didn't give much of a shit about Austria, which pretty much settled the tone for anything that was to come. Austria nowadays is really nothing but a footnote in international politics. Damn, yo, <laughs> he went hard on Austria, bro. He's like, hey, man, I ain't gonna hold you, man. Austria kind of just out there, man. And then they're, they're like out of the way. They're like kind of in the cut. <laughs> Austria has, it's kind of an afterthought. And come to think of it, bro, I don't know. Maybe I haven't really heard of Austria in anything. Like you guys are kind of like, kind of like ghosts you know what i mean like now the area is nice like as far as places to visit i've heard one of the like, one of the most beautiful spots to visit but as far as politics and any big like you know ominous event that, that has gone on in the last decade bro i haven't really heard austria being brought up at all the only thing i knew austria for my entire life was the fact that arnold schwarzenegger was from there man the only time they can feel important now is when the season for winter sports is coming. Really? Oh yeah, that too. Easy. Winter they sports, they'd be what dominating. About the refugee crisis. So, aren't there any rivalries or stuff? Well, that's a stupid question. Well, kid, 
Rivalries in modern Europe are more like something people express during international football matches. But True. if you really want to know, to us Germans, Austria is a country where we can oh, the guy is German. without the annoying side effect of people not speaking our language. The Balkans think of Austria as some kind of fossilized empire that doesn't do shit anymore. The French always had some kind of love-hate relationship to Austria, much like the French and the English, Damn. the French and the Dutch, or the French and the Bavarians, or the French and any kind of Germans, really. It would appear, though, as if France has finally hit puberty and now is most of the time I'm busy arguing with itself so that the only ones left are the former Ottomans. Yes, Turkey and Austria from time to time just Yo, like literally. So that's crazy. So Balkans will be looking at Austria with the side eye. Every other country just be like, eh, I don't know. Austria is just kind of in the cut, bro. Like literally in the cut. Is looking in memory of the good old days. Only that both of them have gotten quite old and are staring at each other from really, really far away. That's all. Great. Is this going to be on the test? No idea what you mean. No, honestly, they didn't even give me a schedule. So all that was Is he picking his lock? Like, what the fuck? Absolutely. He's picking the lock to get out of the classroom. Useless? Well, if you're asking me like that... Yes! Haha! -ha! Later, suckers! Oh my god. Brief history of Austria. What a amazing video. Very well put together, learned a whole lot. Basically, through all the events that were described, Austria seemed like it's it's been through quite a lot. And a lot of countries are just like, okay, Austria, we kind of er, <laughs> putting you on the back burner. But at the same time, Austria high key was one of like, it was like a superpower for a minute, but then pushed to the wayside. But still, I feel like because of all of that, because it's been historically put on a back burner, a lot of the blame, well, 99.9% .9 of the blame never even touches Austria at all. I mean, maybe 100% of it just when it comes to like events in the past that were terrible, right? Austria just be chilling and like, <laughs> you know, so it's kind of crazy. Um, if there's any other interesting slice of information you'd like to share, please let me know in the comments down below. We check out quite a bit of interesting videos pertaining to Austria. I didn't realize how significant that country was until uh, I reflected on an old reaction that I did to, I think it was, um, oh my god, Geography Now. So, yeah, very, very, very interesting stuff, guys. I know I have a lot, of, a lot of people from Austria. What are some cool things to do out there? Might be diving into that, too. So, uh, that's pretty much it. Love you guys. Take care. Kisses in the face and in the mouth and all that other good stuff. Peace! Well, 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 what a pleasure it is to see all of your beautiful faces at the end of this lovely video. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'm sure you know, as I've mentioned in the past, we do have a Discord that's linked in the description down below, and we would love to have you a part of the world's greatest community ever. Bray Gang. Yes, if you've made it to this point in the video, you're officially a part of the community. So go ahead, join the Discord server. Link is in the description down below. And we also have other social media as well, like Instagram, Twitter, we're live. We, we go live on Twitch quite, quite often as well. So I, it would behoove you to, you know, go ahead and subscribe to the Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash James Bragging. Join the cause and be a part of the greatest, literally the greatest community ever. Okay, it's simple. Just go ahead and do those little things. We're trying to grow on all these little platforms and everything, and it really means a lot. Now, I know you guys stumbled up across the channel, and you're like, what does this guy post? Like, what kind of content does he post? Reactions, vlogs, pretty much whatever comes to my mind, all right? It's random content. I don't know what I'm going to be posting 10 years from now, but I do know that you can stick along for the journey, and it really means a lot. Now, for every single person that subscribes and follows all of the accounts that I have made, and they're all the links will be in the description down below that's an automatic entry for any future giveaways i decide to have i'll remind you when the giveaways take place but you'll be surprised what i will be giving away because you guys have supported me so much up to this point and it's only right that i do the same thing back thank you guys so much for being amazing and i will see you in the next video take care peace